Quantum computers. Quantum technology. What on earth is a quantum computer? Bits. Qubits. Try all the codes at once. Whichever nation first develops a practical quantum computer will have a tremendous... Neuromorphic computing is to create a chip that emulates the human Your brain. Your chatbot at some point could express its love for you if that's how you continue prompting it. Artificial intelligence, neuromorphic computing, quantum computing, and we are already into the AI era with ChatGPT, the generative AI in everywhere. And it is a very valid question for all our electronics fraternity or our electronics students that, hey, we are currently learning the circuit design, other thing, communication, right? But if we see from now till five years or 10 years, do our knowledge which we're currently gaining have any value or we need to change our full strategy to be a future proof electronics engineer we will take this question in deep today and also we'll check that all these three words neuromorphic computing quantum computing and ai do they have any interconnection in between them and also we will try to find out if we have any study material or there are any courses for this all cutting edge technology so if you find this topic interesting don't forget to like if you are seeing me for the first time, myself Rasdeep, I am a VLSI engineer and I keep on making video around electronics. So if you love seeing those type of video, then you can consider subscribing this channel. Before we go deep, we need to understand this three terminology. AI or the artificial intelligence, mostly we know, but still for the beginner, those who have don't know, for them, if I go quickly, then as name suggests, it is a tool by uh, which we can give the machine the intelligence, which we have. For example, we I want to add two value, right? So if we give those two value using our keyboard, then we can do the addition. We have a simple formula or simple uh, code we can write in our traditional method, right? There is no issue. But the problem will arrive when we enter those two number using a human handwriting. If I give you those handwriting, like I am writing one, then two, then you can easily deduce that, hey, it is a one, it is a two, and you can add them one and two equal to three. But if you give the same input, those handwritten one and two to your traditional program, then those program will fail because they never know it's one or two because there are a lot of deviation in our handwritten uh, input then a input given to the keyboard and there's the exact location where we need the application of artificial intelligence right so we will program it in such a way so that it can find out the pattern because anyway we are giving one and two those are a combination of pixels only so we in some way i'm not going in deep we will let our computer our machine recognize those pattern and if they find those pattern they will recognize that hey it's a one it's a two and let's edit them so that's a simple example where artificial intelligence is coming and artificial intelligence is all about data the more data you have the more pattern you have and the more correct answer you have so that's about artificial intelligence now what's this term called neuromorphic computing as name suggests neuromorphic computing is a way of circuit design by which if we can mimic our brain if you know a bit about artificial intelligence you know there are many algorithms are there but the most sought after algorithm and that is the deep neural network and that deep neural network is inspired from how our brain work but the deep neural network which we try to build our machine in using the artificial intelligence coding that is in the software part but if we try to build that software part into the hardware then that hardware will be called a neuromorphic computer now you would be a little bit confused between the software part and hardware part so let me give you a simple example again so see if again the same example the addition so you have one and two to edit those one and two generally what we do we just write a code we define one and two those integer or the data type variable we take the input from the user and then we have the simple algorithm or the simple coding structure if you go for c plus plus or python or anything then we just write the sum equal to a plus b and the answer would be sum right and if we run that program that is a software part right in software we are building a addition of two numbers so if you run that code to your general purpose computer then what it will do it will just take those a and b like it will take two memory locations it will uh, put those a and b to memory locations and then it have few inbuilt adder inside it so it will choose one of them them and it will do the addition and it will give you the sum in the result but you have another way also which is much faster than going with a general purpose computer and that is you build a adder in the hardware only right so anytime 
A, you give A and B in the bits, right? Uh, it will directly do addition. There is no selection, no memory location, nothing. So it is much faster than your software version. Yeah, anytime you go with the software version, then also you need a hardware because software can't run without a hardware base, right? But you can build a application specific hardware and which is mostly called ASIC actually, application specific IC design, right? Likewise, we have that deep neural network in the software. We have the ability to write those algorithms and to build how our brain is processing, right? And then those software are run mostly on general purpose computer using a GPU to do the parallel processing because mostly our CPUs are of sequential processing. So we need the parallel processing because our brain work in parallel sense. So that's why we run that software version of neural network into the traditional computer and which is as I have told you will be a bit slower but it will be faster if we can build a hardware which is exactly like how our brain is working. So anytime we want to execute that deep neural network, it will be very much faster into your neuromorphic computing design. So that's why neuromorphic computing is coming here. There is another difference between your traditional computer and neuromorphic computer. In traditional computer which we have, so currently we are following this structure, right? So here what we consider and that is the CPU and the memory will be different. And as your CPU and the memory are different, so your CPU need to fetch the data from the memory side and that fetching will take some time but how our brain work mostly our brain have lots of uh, called neurons and in that neuron processing is going through and also that neuron store the memory at that exact place so there is no delay of fetching the data from a memory side so that means our main objective is that anytime we are doing some processing using a cpu or gpu the memory should be as close as possible or if we can inbuild the memory inside the cpu then it would be wonderful spun this little bit then we are actually the first stage of neuromorphic computing there are a lot of other things also because in the neuron what we have actually uh, two neurons are there they have the dendrites and how they interact interact through the synapse right and to exactly mimic those things we need to have some technology where we can give a flow of electron and the other circuit can receive that electron there are many wonderful um, journals are there wonderful documentations are there i will refer to them in the last of this video where you can actually learn those things right but currently the problem is that we want that strategy that hey uh, anywhere we are doing the processing our memory should be exactly at the same place as nearby as possible and in our traditional computer what we are doing we are building the SRAM. SRAM is actually the things which uh, reside very close to your processing unit and you might have uh, heard about cache memory so that cache memory is nothing but a version of SRAM memory all only right but the problem with SRAM is that anytime power is not there, your SRAM will delete all the data, right? And that's why we have the flash memory where it's called also called non-volatile memory. But that non-volatile memory is very, very much low as compared to SRAM, right? So now we need to actually like to get the success in neuromorphic computing, we need to deal with a new type of uh, memory technology where it should be as faster or actually more faster than in the current SRAM technology and also it should be non-volatile. If there is no power still it need to retain the memory, the content which it have. The same way how brain is working and that is the first step. There are many other steps are also there which are still in very much in the uh, experimental phase and you can refer to this blog here they have nicely explained whatever I am trying to explain to you. Uh, how things are work so now to explain quantum computing and why we need a quantum computing in first sense i need to give you one analogy for example we are staying somewhere right so in uh, our ancient days what we have we can only walk around right and walking around you can explore only around 10 kilometer or 20 kilometer around where you are staying right then we have discovered that hey we can do the horse riding also so then that circle got expanded and then we have the cars so after we got the cars then hey 100 300 400 kilometers is nothing and then we have the airplane so with the invention of full globally we can move around and we know what is happening everywhere right and the same analogy go with your computer also when 1947 we first discovered our transistor or invented our transistor then we 
can only do addition and uh, multiplication maybe and then as processing power are growing we are also growing and currently we are at the generative ai era is this something a more faster way of computing maybe you are true but you are also wrong because quantum computing is some other domain for example how we are exploring our neighborhood and that is through land only right but now you want to explore the sea also so, so to explore the sea uh, your car your helicopter or your aeroplane nothing can help then we need to have a boat right boat is no way faster than your aeroplane or your car or anything but boat have its own utility likewise quantum computing also for example if you want to know how things are working in nature like you want to simulate the nature so there are a huge number of variables which our traditional computer can't do it with quantum computing the predicting the weather forecast would be more more accurate we can easily develop new atom new molecules and how we are doing these things it's parallel processing 2 to the 53 states which is 10 million billion and thus that enormous amount of parallel processing is what gives it the power and that's why the quantum computing is very much in in demand probably in 10 year from now or 15 year from now quantum computing actually work on qubits and to know what is qubits there are many video for example you can refer to this uh, video there they have nicely explained what is qubits is but our concentration for this video and that is as a electronics enthusiast right can we use our current knowledge of btech or mtech to build a quantum computer and the answer is yes because uh, currently intel also have announced that hey they have uh, built the qubits which is the basic building block of your quantum computer using silicon only and there is a very nice video from this channel where they have actually explain how uh, you are using the current silicon technology and the electromagnetism to build a quantum bit and the good news is that other two also like neuromorphic computing and also you have your ai in both these and also including quantum computer your current knowledge of circuit design will help you a lot a lot you can't design without those knowledge those are the fundamental actually and if you can see this diagram created by me it have some flaws so don't worry but yeah if you consider this circle as your ai again ai have many other sub domain like machine learning uh deep learning but if you consider this is the world of ai then where our these three technologies are so coming first would be your neuromorphic computer so neuromorphic computing can be used for many other application but it will have a huge boost into running those ai algorithms which we currently have uh we think that here generative ai is very fast but you can't imagine how wonderful thing we can create using artificial intelligence and for that we need the processing power and the traditional computer for sure have a threshold where after that we can't expand its speed and that time we need to explore the neuromorphic computing then we have quantum computing so again quantum computing can be used for for finding many other unknown things like we are exploring in the sea but it can also help you to run many other type of ai algorithm which we can't run because of the limitation of the traditional computer and anyway we have a traditional computer where we are building with you as fast as we can as we by shrinking down our mosfet as far as we can go but there is a bottleneck as i say but as a vlsi engineer or as friend vlsi engineer or electronic student we already know the traditional computer how to design the chip right then if we take some advanced subject i will tell you how you can start but as a btech student is not recommended now because you need to first know your basic things which is useful to build a chip for a traditional computer but after that if you just go one step ahead then you can go for your quantum computing and neuromorphic computing also and if you tell me then i can see neuromorphic computing coming to market faster than the quantum computing because quantum computing have a very much drawback and that is quantum those qubits they work only if they are kept inside a freezer and not general freezer those freezer temperature are lower than the temperature in space but yeah uh, for sure in 10 15 20 year if we alive then we can see those quantum computing working probably we will be working on quantum computing or even field computing so uh, future is bright all those things are coming by taking the inspirations of traditional computer plus the mind how mind is coming uh, working and the most important thing are they available for free 
there are many paid things are there in udemy you can explore those but i'll tell you i'll give you few links which you can explore for the for free and you can just um, feed your uh, inquisitive mind but again those NPTEL courses are mostly onto the software part but because uh, they they are letting you know how to build the algorithms for the quantum computer and i was trying to find out if i have anywhere how the circuit part of the quantum computing we can learn but i don't think we have any any, any free courses on to that because it is very allied very much advanced uh, topic so i don't think uh, as a btech student as a mtech student we can understand how the circuit is implemented but still we have few youtube videos you can explore those youtube videos just to know how things are working and then you can start finding out the journals on quantum computer qubits silicon qubits how they, they are making intel also have released those and uh, i hope we have have some some journals there out there and you can explore how the circuits is being made for neuromorphic computing again we have an NPTEL course but it is again onto the brain psychology because to master your neuromorphic computing you need to know many things you need to know the neural science you need to know the physics you need to know the circuits part right so that NPTEL course is mostly onto the neuroscience neuroscience as a mathematical model that's the first step and then only you can build a circuit right and also there is a journal which is free of cost you can access there uh, any 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 new uh, achievements are there they keep on updating those paper and if you can write some paper on neuromorphic computing uh, after some discovery you can publish in this free journal available there and as i said there are a few blogs where they have explained nicely these uh, topics so i will give all the links in the description you can check out and you can uh, find out why these things are and to learn ai there are a lot of courses available in nptl but again ai have two parts right the software part which is building the algorithms those things and then the part we have the hardware part so hardware part is not any different than learning your vlsi engineering right there are a few courses where we are concentrating on designing a ai accelerator because that algorithm need to run on a hardware piece of code and hardware need to be fast enough to give us a result uh, in, in the stipulated time period. So you don't need to be confused. As our thumbnail was confusing, you don't need to confuse. Your main aim should be to learn your circuit design and a little bit of coding. Because everywhere, every field you are seeing two parts are there, software part and hardware part. So you need to know a little bit of coding. But the main thing, the main priority should be understanding your circuits. There should be your first priority. Second priority should be learning a bit of coding and algorithms, how things are working. And third and most important, getting a 9 plus CGPA. And after that, if you have some time, you can explore these extra parts. But for sure, uh, coming to next 10, 15 years, there won't be any industrial work on quantum computer or in neuromorphic computer. We will only have if you go for a PhD. So before you finish, please check if you have liked this video. And so till then, tata bye bye and keep smiling. And comment me down what next you want to see in this YRD channel.